Welcome to ABB's presentation regarding basic troubleshooting of ACS320 VFDs. After completion of this learning module, you will have the required knowledge to understand the common ACS320 startup and commissioning challenges, understand a variety of drive messages, including alarms and faults, understand a variety of common field bus related troubleshooting steps, perform many basic troubleshooting steps on ACS320 VFDs, and correct improper operation due to incorrect installation and programming. When commissioning an ACS320 VFD, certain items must be confirmed prior to power up. Two items are the VFD's input power supply level and configuration. Is the supply single phase or three phase? Is it 230 volts or 460 volts? The level and type must match the drive. This can be confirmed from the information on the VFD serial number label. Drive and motor compatibility must also be confirmed. Ensure that your drive has appropriate voltage and current ratings for the specified motor. Again, this information can be confirmed from the VFD serial number label and the motor nameplate. Control wiring must also be landed in the correct locations on the VFD terminals. The primary locations required to operate a VFD are a start command, stop command, and speed reference. Additionally, a direction selection input, constant speed or frequency inputs, analog inputs, and field bus cables can also be connected. Ensure any start enable or run enable safety interlocks are jumpered out in the control wiring. This is achieved by wiring either plus 24 volts DC or 0 volts DC to their respective digital inputs for either PNP or NPN wiring configurations. If you don't want to jumper the inputs out, you may disable the start enable 1 and 2 and run enable parameters in the group 16 system controls section. Alarms and faults must also be cleared to allow for proper operation. Let's take a moment to discuss some of the most common alarms and faults encountered. The first message on this slide is actually one of the least encountered, but it's good to know what this is straight out of the gate. Drive not responding when encountered prior to giving the drive a start command can be an indicator of a potentially damaged or defective drive. The majority of the time, this fault indicates a poor connection between the VFD's control board and control panel. This can be the control panel's fault, the control board's fault, or the double-ended RJ45 adapter that connects the two. If field bus communications are connected to the drive, and the drive was otherwise operational before the message occurred, then the microprocessor may be impeded by corrupted data. Alarm 2021, start enable 1 missing, is triggered when a control input should be wired to digital input 4, but it is not. From the factory, the drive will want a control input on DI4 due to parameter 1608 defaulting to a value of DI4. Setting 1608 equal to not used or wiring the control input will clear the alarm 2021. Overvoltage alarms or faults are usually indicating input power supply disturbances that are translating over to the DC bus capacitor bank inside the VFD. They can also be caused by the excessive regenerative energy of VFD encounters during too short a deceleration. Overcurrent alarms and faults indicate excessive motor current draw. Causes of this can be problems with the motor, bad parameters, especially for the motor, and mechanical problems. Listed are a few mechanical problems that may be encountered that can contribute to overcurrents. Short circuit faults are almost always caused by one of two things, either a short circuit in the motor and motor cables, or a damaged or defective drive. Undervoltages occur when fuses are blown on the line side of the drive. They can also be caused by a bad transformer or other reduced supply network voltage level. Alarm 2004 direction lock occurs when parameter 1003 is programmed incorrectly. Fault 16, earth fault, can be caused by a damaged motor, motor cables that are too long, or an internal path to ground detected in the motor or motor cables. This can be caused by moisture in the motor or damaged insulation. Moisture in the motor oftentimes causes numerous intermittent nuisance trips on earth faults. 
device overtemp faults occur when temperature is too high and or cooling is not sufficient in and through the VFD. They can also be triggered if the motor being run is too large for the VFD. The various motor temperature alarms and faults usually indicate the VFD parameters are not programmed correctly. Check groups 99 and 30 and also parameter 3501. Panel loss is the VFD saying the connection between the VFD and control panel has been severed when in hand control. Check the integrity of this connection. It can also be triggered when the 3002 panel com error is set equal to fault, and it should not be. So you might ask yourself some of the following questions while troubleshooting an ACS 320. What do I do if the control panel will not power up? Well, Ensure the supply power is at the correct VFD terminals and at the correct levels. Verify the integrity of all your wiring connections. Ensure that the RJ45 connector is connected between the control panel and the VFD and is not damaged. And test the control panel on another known working ABB VFD. Okay, but what if my VFD is powered up, but the VFD will not start? Well, similarly, you want to make sure you ensure the supply power is at the correct VFD terminals and at the correct levels, and also verify integrity of all your wiring connections. But you'll also want to ensure the VFD is in the correct operating mode, for instance, hand or auto. Check parameter 1001 and 1002 and 1102 and ensure they are set correctly for the desired operation and ensure that 0113 control location parameter reads equal to EXT1. If it does not, adjust accordingly. What do I do if the VFD will not stop? Well, ensure the proper application macro is selected in 9902. Ensure proper programming of the 1001 EXT1 commands parameter. Ensure the wiring for any dedicated stop command per the macro is wired correctly. And lastly, ensure that the 0113 control location parameter reads equal to EXT1. If it does not, adjust accordingly. What if the VFD will start but not accelerate, or the VFD will not follow the speed or frequency reference? Well, ensure the VFD is receiving the controller reference in the 0111 external ref1 parameter. Ensure all the motor data is correct in parameter group 99 motor data. Check parameter 1103 ref1 select and ensure it is set equal to the correct value. For example, com if you're using a Modbus connection. Ensure parameter 1102 which is ext1 slash ext2 selection is set equal to the correct value. For example, EXT1 or the correct digital input for your given macro. And lastly, check group 12 parameters and ensure that constant speed inputs are not active. What do I do if the VFD experiences intermittent faults? Check the fault list in the user's manual ACS320 drives 0.5 to 30 horsepower document. Use process of elimination and isolate the potential sources of the problems, including the input power supply, motor and cables, control wiring including fuel bus, control panel, or VFD. And lastly, please feel free to contact ABB Technical Support at the number shown for further assistance. ACS 320s can use field bus communications for start-stop, speed and frequency reference, status, and more. The image on this slide shows how the ACS320 should be tied into your network. A set of RS-485 breakout terminals is provided on the VFD. There are two recommended methods of wiring field bus connections into the VFD's RS-485 terminals. One method utilizes a four-conductor cable with a shield, while the other method uses a two-conductor cable with a shield. The four-conductor method is preferred, but the two-conductor method is acceptable as an alternate wiring method. This information is taken from the user's manual ACS320 drives 0.5 to 30 horsepower document, which is available as a free download on new.abb.com. When troubleshooting field bus communications, it helps to know what signals the VFD and field bus connections make available, and to know how those should normally operate. 
we can look at these signals in parameter group 53 inside the VFD. What about communication loss? Well, in the ACS320, communication loss parameters are programmed in the following. Parameter 3018, com fault function, and parameter 3019, com fault time. What if no master station is online? Well, neither the EFB OK messages nor the errors found in 5307 EFB CRC errors and 5308 EFB UART errors increase on any of the stations. To correct this problem, check that a network master is connected and properly programmed on the network, and verify that the cable is connected and is not cut or short-circuited. Let's talk about duplicate station numbers or swapped wires on a network. If two or more stations have duplicate numbers, two or more drives cannot be addressed. Every time there's a read or write to one particular station, the value for 5307 EFB CRC errors or 5308 EFB UART errors advances. To correct this problem, check all the station numbers and edit any conflicting values. If communication wires are swapped, in other words, channel A on one end is connected to channel B on the other end, the value of 5306 EFB OK messages does not advance, and the value of 5307 EFB CRC errors and 5308 EFB UART errors will advance. To correct this problem, check that the 485 lines are not swapped. Regarding 0028 Serial 1 Error Fault, if the VFD's control panel shows fault 0028, serial 1 error, then either the master system is down, the communication connection is bad, or the timeout selection for the drive is too short for the given installation. To correct this problem, resolve the issue with the master system, check the communications connection at the drive, or increase the time set by parameter 3019 com fault time. Drive not responding. Occasionally, data from the master controller may become corrupted during transfer to the VFD. When this corruption happens excessively and for too long a duration, a drive not responding message will be displayed on the control panel. This is due to the excess corrupted data impeding the microprocessor. To correct this issue, cycle power on the VFD. This will clear the corrupted data impeding the microprocessor. Isolate and fix the root issue of the data corruption whether it be wiring, grounding, induced noise, etc. Let's take a moment to talk about intermittent problems and disturbances. The problems described in the previous slides are the most common problems encountered with ACS320 serial communication. Intermittent problems might also be caused by loose connections, wear on wires caused by equipment vibration, insufficient grounding and shielding on both the devices and on the communication cables, improper cable routing practices, for instance, power or control cables run in the same conduit, and lastly, noise interference from external equipment elsewhere on the network. So let's briefly review. During this module, we've examined how to understand the common ACS320 startup and commissioning challenges, how to understand a variety of drive messages, including alarms and faults, understand a variety of common field bus related troubleshooting steps, how to troubleshoot ACS320 VFDs, and how to correct improper operation caused by incorrect installation or programming. Thank you for your attention during ABB's presentation regarding basic troubleshooting of ACS320 VFDs and for your continued use of ABB VFDs and products. Have a great day!